A third straight must-win W, fueled by Stephen Curry and Andrew Wiggins without Thompson and Kaminga in Charlotte, featured the Dubs holding their ground in a play-in tournament battle with the having won 11 straight must-win Houston Rockets. Sunday's upcoming matchup for Golden State is with a Victor Wembanyama-led San Antonio team coming off a win against Jalen Brunson and the New York Knicks, who are going to be out for revenge after a loss to the Dubs earlier this month. The first of four straight upcoming games against a team from Texas and one of three taking place in in the Lone Star State over the next week foreshadows a showdown with the Jalen Green, Fred Van Vliet fueled Houston Rockets. That'll be a regular season matchup for the ages a few games down the line on Thursday, April the 4th. Before delving into this heated for more reasons than one playoff race and breaking down what went right in North Carolina, we'll address a false narrative about Steph, but this entire video signifies why the Golden State Warriors still have more to prove. You can't miss it. Right quick, just 12.7% of you are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already and enjoy my content. Despite Curry at the time still being a three-time champion a few years back, narratives surrounding Steph not being a clutch performer would begin to evolve, which were based around subpar performances efficiency-wise in 2016 and 2019 finals losses, one series where Stefan was playing through injuries to his knee, elbow, and ankle, and the other where he was dealing with a severely banged-up roster with injuries to Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, DeMarcus Cousins, and Kevon Looney. Still, in 2022, Curry's performances from 20. 19 and 16 led JJ Redick to confidently state on ESPN that he'd rather have Luca over Stefan in the clutch. We're talking about it right now in 2022. Who would you rather have with the ball with the game on the line? Steph. It's clearly Luka Doncic. Steph. It's clearly Luka Doncic. This would be Steph. followed by Curry taking out Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks in five games of the West Finals. In the next round, after the Boston Celtics would win game one of the NBA Finals, Skip Bayless would reinforce his case that Curry doesn't have the clutch gene. I have made the case to you again and again, and I should have listened more closely to myself. <laughs> on the biggest stage, in the biggest moments, he displays no clutch gene. Curry would respond by taking out Ime Udoka and the Celtics in four out of the next five games and finishing with averages of 31-6-6 on an incredibly efficient 48-44-86 shooting split in a six-game championship series win against Boston. However, the mainstream media discrediting in terms of talking heads claiming Curry's not clutch has most shockingly even a couple years after Steph proved those takes from Redick and Bayless to be ignorant ones with an all-time great finals performance influenced casual fans to this day to carry the narrative in their own twisted mind's eye that Stefan isn't clutch. Like Eric Russell, who recently tweeted, Curry might be the best shooter ever, but he's been pretty mediocre in the clutch for most of his career. Or, like depressed Celtics fan slash KD fan, who recently responded to a post saying Steph should win Clutch Player of the Year by stating, he's not clutch, bro, you know this. Additionally, these screenshots display that the false narrative that Steph isn't clutch still is often discussed. Exposing every take from doubters you've heard so far in this video, according to Warriors Muse, this year Stephen Curry's joined only Kobe Bryant in 2010, Carmelo Anthony in 2006, himself in 2014, and Russell Westbrook in 2017 throughout NBA history to have made at least five go-ahead baskets in the final 20 seconds of a game within a single season. On top of that, this tweet from Terry Worst using stats from NBA.com displays Curry as both the highest scoring clutch player player, as well as the most efficient player in the clutch. A tweet from Claw World using basketball reference shows us Curry has the third highest effective field goal percentage in the clutch since 1997, only trailing the interior and mid-range prominent Shaquille O'Neal and Kawhi Leonard. Additionally, since 2013, Curry's hit the most game-winning shots with less than five seconds remaining in a game, but cutting to the chase, how will the clutchest player in the NBA on paper and the most dominant three-point shooter ever by a mile, performed down the stretch of the season and then in a potential two do-or-die play-in tournament games in order to reach the postseason. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, Dub Nation, but according to basketball experts over at ESPN, not too well, at least in terms of Steph leading the Warriors to any team success. ESPN's determined, based off their analytics, that the Dubs have merely a 23% chance at making the postseason this year.
This is the same network that gave Golden State a 14% chance to win the 2022 NBA Finals before the opposite happened. In spite of the doubters, since February 1st, the Warriors have what's the NBA's fifth best defensive rating and are the only team next to the surging on their tail and dangerous as hell Houston Rockets among the top 10 teams over this span without a secured playoff spot. This defensive improvement has allowed Golden State to own the ninth best winning percentage over the last two months while having played the most games among all teams over this span. As all-time great as he is, Curry needs pressure relievers like Wiggins to step up, as he's been on record as pleading for, which is portrayed by the statement on your screen in a video from the Warriors X account. Good news is, Andrew's production has lived up to what it's needed to be as of late, as he's averaging 27-3 and three to go along with two blocks per game over his past three outings on very solid efficiency. Respect to A. Wiggins for getting it together, but he's gotta keep it up if his team has any chance. Draymond, who already boldly stated that he doesn't give a damn about the on their tail Houston Rockets, would respond to Eason's Instagram video you may have seen calling out the Warriors, saying, I am a little surprised that he hasn't played in a game since January 1st, so it's kind of tough to come out yelling, come out to play, and you're not gonna play. On a separate note, more hate from ESPN came in the form of Jay Williams subtly attempting to, yet blatantly to any non-casual, trying to stir up drama between the greatest offensive and defensive player of this generation in Stephen Curry and Draymond Green by stating on air a few days back following the Green ejection in Orlando, quote, Draymond Green is diminishing the ultimate legacy of how people are looking at the leadership of Stephen Curry. That's what's happening right now. End quote. If all the mainstream hate that your boy D-Flow's keeping receipts on doesn't motivate Golden State 1 through 15 into the coaching, training staff, and front office, then nothing will. No Kaminga for a second straight game and Klay Thompson for a first game, both of whom were out due to knee injuries, didn't stop the way the dubs took care of business from being essentially, and as it should have been, a start to finish domination. The showing did, however, feature the slightest bit of superhero on villain drama. Batman Grant Williams versus the Arkham Knight Draymond Green saw the Arkham Knight nearly cause some serious devastation to Batman's family jewels, yet would instead opt for a slight shove like the one he had in Aldama a few games back. Green continues to be a wild card and needs to find better outlets for his anger than opponents and officials. If he does want to do that, I'd suggest joining the WWE, taking a beginner's mind approach to get back to again looking up to and being mentally influenced by the player drafted three years before you and Stephen Curry needs to happen. Speaking to that, regarding Curry, Kerr would go full Victor Frankenstein mode on us, stating pregame in Charlotte, if you could design a human being to be a professional athlete and create that person in a lab, you would end up with Steph Curry. If Steve truly cares about Curry as much as that statement entails, he'll continue to keep the adequate communication with his legend about playing time. From a team mentality perspective, as much as you want to say that you don't give a damn about Houston, the 100% main focus for this dubs team has to be keeping their hanging on by a thread playoff hopes alive live, with they having one 11 straight beast on their tail. So treating every possession like their life depends on it will be essential. The next few games will really reveal the character of the Warriors 15-man unit in terms of how badly they want to win and the belief they have in how far they can go this season. We've seen how good this team can be when coached correctly and with 100% effort defensively. Shifting to the film, where an example of the heavily demanded bigger starting five of Green and TJD paying off was evident straight out of the gates when after receiving a pocket pass from CP3, TJD bricks a well-contested by Nick Richards layup, but Green as the second traditional big on the floor is there to sneak up behind Brandon Miller for the O board, and Trace gets in the way of Richards to open up a clear Green bunny. Jackson Davis then began to cook, receiving multiple dimes from Curry, the first of which was a left-handed bullet to the dunkers, and the second of which split two defenders. On the other end, TJD would swat an off-balance attempt from Trey Mann and save it from going out of bounds, back on offense, where after setting an on-ball screen for Chris Paul, Trace would gather it on the roll, plus up fake, then duck in around fellow rookie Brandon Miller, some number 57 pick on number 2 pick violence. The Hall of Fame half of the front court would then take over, as Draymond would find Steph coming off this empty side cross from Wiggins before lobbing it to Gary on the roll for a tough finish through Gordon Hayward. Steph tells Green to swing it to Moody right here, but Green again sees Peyton lurking down low and proceeds to spot the young glove for a second straight field goal. 
sending him into the locker room with momentum was Curry executing this Kerr drawn up empty side pin down where he comes off the Jackson Davis pick gets the CP swing up fakes which man sticks with before Steph goes to a slow halfway inverted jab right has he left in simultaneous moving jab which he leverages off into a step back but it's not enough the use of another pump fake is however freeing up a nifty buzzer beating triple man is ridiculous that shot would provide life for a 39 to 26 third quarter ravaging where Wiggins would about four minutes into the frame gather this loop in CP entry and deal with the late help of Miller for an and one following this green block on Richards where he cleanly gets all ball great no call Trace shows you his ability to fill out the lane in transition by collecting and finishing a nice dime from Wiggins from the fast break to the half where two of TJD's career third best 18 points came when he caught this pass in traffic from Dre and in Moses Malone fashion followed up a brick around the basket not once but twice to tally both a couple O boards and a field goal. Off a of Jackson Davis pick, Curry shows off his overlooked passing skill like he did with that left-handed setup to TJD earlier by stepping back to fake a triple to draw attention of all five Hornet defenders before baseball pass into green with a bullet. Four of Moody's game high off the bench of 15 were generated from a loony down screen where he catches and shoots to complete one of Paul's game high nine assists by both knocking down the triple and drawing contact. From there, the dubs maintained around a 20 point advantage and finished with an 18 point win. It was a night between the lines showcasing how the dubs three elite quarterbacks being Green, Paul, and Curry can pick opposing teams apart to a dominant degree with elite facilitating. A basic but make or break question is, what needs to happen for Golden State to build off a current three-game winning streak, in your opinion? I'm going to give a shout-out to a commenter who gives an answer to that question in my next video. By June 21st, the top five commenters who currently stand as you see on your screen, but the race is close, will receive free merchandise of their choosing by messaging me on Instagram or Twitter. I hook up the top five commenters to show my audience half the support they show me, so thank you regardless. Today's shout-out goes to Irvin Guerra, who says the biggest piece of adversity the dubs have face this year has been the sudden decline and inconsistency of Wiggs and Clay because it was very much unexpected from them, thus triggering the Steph has no help narrative. Irvin, they've turned it up as of late, but you're on point with that take. Let's see if they can keep up their turnaround though. Your boy D-Flow signing off, and I'll see you next video.